Hello everybody, my name is Keith Thomas and I'm the a sports producer here at Metro East Community Media. And uh, with me today is uh, Jim Schlachter, who's the superintendent of the Gresham Bartle School District. And uh, we're uh, embarking on our seventh season of covering the Mountain Conference Varsity Boys and Girls Basketball Games. And we're all excited about that. And while our main focus is, of course, the sports, there are lots of other things that are uh, exciting things that are going on in the school district. And Jim is here to talk to me today about what's going on. And Jim, thank you for joining me today. Well, Keith, it's a pleasure, and uh, we're pretty thankful that our, our games do get covered. I know a lot of people are interested that can't be at the games, so it's, yeah. it's a, a great service that's provided. Yeah, well, we're happy to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, as, as we were talking a little bit before this, you know, what's exciting in Gresham Barlow District, of course, with the passage of a school bond, uh, there's great promise in terms of what that will do to our schools. And given this is, is associated with high school basketball, I thought I would just say a few things about our two large high schools, Gresham High School and San Barlow High School. Uh, the bond is really focused uh, on a lot, all schools to some extent, but those two schools, because of their age and condition, are getting really the lion's share of the dollars that uh, were voted into place by our taxpayers. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, so Gresham High is obviously the oldest uh, and has a lot of needs, and so what we see taking place there, in fact, in the case of both schools, uh, the work has already begun in terms of the planning. So the principals are, have selected vision teams that consist of staff members, few community members, parents, a couple of kids, and they'll work with uh, architects in starting the design work. And that work is starting now and will be fully completed by the end of the school year this year. Uh, that allows, in both cases, then the architects, the contractors, everybody to get together to start the work of the, the final plans. So about this time next year, um, our schools are at least projected already be in bid phase in terms of, of getting contractors on board and starting the work at the end of the 17-18 school year. Mm. That's, well, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys are just super, super excited about this. Well, we are. You know, the, both of those schools uh, really are not serving students as well as they need to. In the case of Gresham, uh, spaces just aren't big enough. The heat, quality, the heat, the light, the electricity, everything is just a problem, and, and it's impacting what's going on. Uh, Barlow, too, I mean, it was built in the late 60s and really has had very little done to it, a couple of additions, but uh, it also needs a lot of work. Um, relative to athletics, both of them have had some work done in recent years. Uh, Gresham High School, we did a turf field and did some work there, but this bond will allow a more comprehensive look at the entire school. At Gresham High, that involves on the athletic side of the world, uh, some work in the locker rooms and weight rooms and team rooms, particularly on the girls' side, which has really not been uh, at the same level as the boys' side, as well as about a 60 to 70 percent rebuild of the rest of the school auditorium lots of classrooms those kinds of things mm. on the barlow side uh, there will be some work done on the outside facility in terms of of bleachers and concessions and those kind of things that's kind of the exterior uh, on the inside same kind of thing there will, uh, looks as though there'll probably be a new wing new administrative section a uh, number of new classrooms other classrooms remodeled a large enclosed courtyard with a commons area. So a lot of things that I think will make these schools on par with other 6A high schools in the region and, and allow our community and our kids to be proud of, of their school as a, as a place to go. Yeah. Uh, is there any plans for a uh, stadium at Barlow for football games? Yeah, we typically don't refer to it as a stadium. Sometimes that gets misinterpreted by yeah. the public as, as though it's something like they would build in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we certainly don't, don't have that. But we have a lot of dollars committed to the site. So that involves a variety of things. One is parking. As we move the administrative portion to the north side of the building where the performing arts are now, uh, we'll rework all of the traffic flow in terms of where buses go, where cars go. We need to add a lot of parking so that we can host events there much more successfully. Uh, and then as far as the field itself, uh, the, the bleachers, looking to see if we can get them covered to get concessions, to get bathrooms. That turf, even though to me it still seems new, will need to be replaced uh, and this bond has yeah. money set aside for that. So yeah, I think there will be incredible site improvement at Barlow. The idea is that when you enter uh, that, that school from the north side, which would be more the main entry in the future, 
it looks like a 6A high school you can be proud of. Yeah. Right now you feel like you're driving up to the back of an old school. Yeah. And that's going to totally change. Sure. Uh, and, and really make it a good, good both learning and then also good for activities and athletics. Yeah. Well, I imagine um, that the students and the athletes would just love to have their own field instead of having <laughs> to go over to the college. Well, they've started, they've started hosting their own football games there in the last few years. The problem they've run into is there's very little seating available yeah. for the visitors. Parking is a mess. If you have a, for example, if you have a, a, a visiting team that has a good following and Barlow's having a good year, people are parking up and down those side rows, which have those deep ditches. They run into mm. all kinds of safety problems, people getting to the stadium. So a lot of work has to take place on parking and, and just identifying many more spaces. And then just traffic control. You know, how, do you, how do you get cars in and out in a timely manner and not sure. have a lot of backup? Yeah. Uh, now, what... How long is this whole process going to take? You said that in about a year they'll have the, the bid right, out. Right, right. So it'll be, um, you know, visible construction for those two sites will probably be the summer of 2018. And then it's pretty condensed. It's about a two-year ongoing work. In other words, the students, uh, a lot of effort will be put in the, to where is instruction taking place and working around construction. And, and, and there are companies that are excellent at doing this, keeping everybody safe. But they'll both be construction zones for two years. Yeah. Um, you know, and the goal is then at about the end of those two years, late spring, start to wrap it up and get it ready. Uh, two other large projects that we're full speed ahead on at the same time are two elementaries that are being replaced. So East Gresham and North Gresham are about the same place in the process as the high schools. Uh, we're doing all of the design work. And likewise, they'll, in a year from now, they'll be going to bid. And then the, the summer that follows, it's full speed ahead. And both of those, the advantage is you can build the school first, and then you can move the kids to it and, and then tear down the old ones. Mm. Barlow and Gresham, you got to build it while they're there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, there are, there are uh, it's, it's been done uh, very well by a lot of companies, and that's part of the, the proposals that, that architects and contractors bring to us, is how can they do this in a timely and a safe manner, and, and that has a lot to do with who, who gets the project. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's, this all sounds this is wonderful. Now, you know, just personally for me, you know, I'm a Gresham graduate, so, um, and this really does my heart proud to see that you know, there's going right. to be uh, improvements to the facilities. Right. And all along, two things will be happening, and, and we'll want to connect again on this. Uh, one, in the design phase, so this late winter, early spring, there will be some community events where we'll bring people in to look at the schematic designs. Mm. Uh, to see what they've come up with, what's it going to look like. You know, the architects will sketch things up so you can kind of see what the end product looks like. So that'll be a part. The other thing starting in probably March or April is an oversight, a community oversight for all of the bond projects. And then they'll be putting out regular reports, certainly an annual report, but they're monitoring the the schedule, the time, the budget, just to make sure they can report out to the community how it's going. You know, mm -hmm. are, are we on time? Are we within the budget, all of those yeah. kind of things. So we're really going to, and then we'll also uh, be working soon to, to put up a, a website dedicated to the bond projects. Mm. So people can go and track project by project what's going on, what are the timelines, what does it look like. Because we really want the community to get engaged and involved uh, to build that confidence because somewhere down the road uh, the school district will be back and need other things done and we need the community to understand that we've done a good job. Yeah, with with this bond because that's a big one. Future ones. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think the the I know that the uh, the district had, had asked had put a, a bond before the voters uh, previously and it and it failed. Right. What do you think it it passed now and failed before? What's right. the difference? You know, if you look at the the history of bond measures in our district, and I think it happens elsewhere too. The bonds that it have passed, this is the third one over a period of about 20 some years, were always preceded by a failure. And typically what I think what has happened, uh, and I think that was the case in 2013, is first you have to get the awareness of the public. And I think in 2013, it had been 13 years since the last bond, and I, I, I'm not sure we did a good enough job communicating and certainly uh, did not get enough people involved in, in kind of shaping what the bond would look like. When we started to work in 2016, which was right after the 2013 failure, people were more paying much more attention, mm -hmm. and they were willing to, to participate, and we got a lot more community feedback. So that I think when the bond package was eventually put out by the board, it aligned better with what people were willing to vote yes on. 
And again, that 13 served as a learning process. And there could be other factors, too. It was a non-presidential election, so the voter turnout's very low. Oh. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one, obviously, turnout was very high. Uh, and that helps, typically, across the country, bond measures are more successful when there's high voter turnout. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, we were very pleased. We ended up winning by 850 votes. And, and those margins are about what they've been back in 2000 and back in 1995 when past bonds have passed. So yeah. uh, you never, you know, landslides are pretty rare anywhere. Sure. Uh, but we were just real pleased that it passed. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. So, yeah. Uh, is anything else that you'd like to talk about, what's going on in the district? I'll dodge the weather conversation because as you and I sit here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it, it's, it's been a rough year uh, in terms of inclement weather. And, oh, I know. And, you know, the thing that is I communicate with folks, and we don't, actually, we get a lot of good feedback from people, and people understand safety has to come first. And sure. if, you know, at our high schools, a lot of kids drive, high school kids, and if your roads going out to Barlow are unsafe, we're just putting kids and families at risk. Yeah. Likewise, buses, we have a lot of hills. People who live in this part of Gresham maybe don't realize, you know, it's kind of flat, but all of our schools are served by hilly areas, and if buses have to change just to get up the hill, you know, can kids walk on the sidewalk? So those are the things we yeah. have to consider, and there are, I don't doubt there are some areas where you look outside and it's like, really? I mean, why aren't we having school? But we're a big district serving 18 schools and a lot of acres and a lot of roads. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll work through this winter and see how, <laughs> how it goes. Yeah, kids may be getting a, a late start on their summer this year. Well, they might be, and I think, you know, it's fun for the first few days when, uh, for not just the kids, uh, I think a lot of times the staff member will, oh man, this is great, you know, the day off. We're yeah. way past that. <laughs> <laughs> I think people are like, we need to be in school. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things we've already decided, we've moved first semester finals at the high school back a week, hmm. just to extend the semester a week that, uh, to give more time because it's it's difficult teachers have not had the time with students that they've needed to prepare them for the semester finals yep. so we'll extend it a week and get them a little okay. closer to the finish line with more time in class all right well so. uh uh, that's uh, all the questions I have for you. Okay, GM. good. Well, Keith, yeah. I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, you're welcome. And I uh, look forward, maybe we'll do this again, particularly when we get some of these bond projects into a design okay. phase. They'll, they'll look some things we can talk about in more certainty. Okay. Well, uh, I've been talking with uh, Superintendent Jim Schlachter here about the exciting things happen happening in the district. And uh, thank you very much for watching.